Hi, I welcome all of you in my channel and in this video in which I am going to discuss Randomized Complete Block Design RCBD. In the previous two parts, I have discussed about what is R RCBD, its example, data and I have solved some of scale of total, some of scale of treatment. In this video, I will solve some of scale of the blocks and then some of scale of error, then I will I will make an over table and based upon that an over table we will make our conclusions. So let's start the video. So in this formula I have A is equal to number of treatments that are 4, 8500, 8700, 8900 and 9100. Y double dot is equal to 2155 and N is equal to 24. Upon putting the values I will get my result. Here Y dot J is equal to all the sum of these blocks. So I have told you earlier that J means blocks, okay, the vertical columns. So 350.8, 359.04, 364.4. So likewise, I will take the square of all the terms and then I will add them. So this summation means to add all of these terms and this Y dot J means take the square of all the sum of each column. And 1 by 4 is the number of treatments. Now I will calculate SSE sum of square of the error. This sum of square error is also called pooled standard deviation and it can be calculated as sum of square total minus sum of square of the treatments that is the extrusion pressure minus the sum of square for the blocks. Okay, Or you can say in, in generically it's block or if you say specifically so it is batch to batch variation and then so sum of the square of the error become 109.188. So this is the ANOVA table based upon the values we have calculated. So when we divide this sum of square for the treatment, I mean pressure divided by the degree of freedom that is 3, we will get the MS for the treatment or MS for the extrusion pressure. Likewise, when I divide the S, uh, SS batches upon their degree of freedom respective 5, I will get 38 and 109 divided by 15 7.3 so this is my you can say it is the variance or you can say when we uh, take the scale out of it we can say it pooled standard deviation it have um, numerous names and we can or we can also uh, call it mse mean square of the error so you can use all these three terminologies for this term and this term is the most important because it it, it has been obtained by the overall residuals. So I have discussed the residuals in my earlier videos that whenever I have the mean of any uh, treatment and when we divide, when we subtract each treatment from its mean, we will get the residual at that treatment point. So anyhow, we got the uh, mean scares after that in order to calculate the F ratio. So F ratio is basically, uh, it's a test in which, in which we take the ratio of two variances. So this is the variation due to extrusion pressure and this is the variation that it has been called that is uh, in between the whole data. So we will take uh, this variation or due to some factor in the numerator and overall variation in the denominator. So we got this F value for the pressure. Likewise, in order to calculate the variation due to the batches, so 38.45 divided by this 7.3257. I will get this 5.24. These p values can be obtained in the Excel. Let's go to the Excel and calculate these values. So in the Excel, you will have to first insert is equal to then f dot dist dot rt. You will have to select this command. It is written x. So x means my f statistic value that is 8.10 then insert the comma after that degree of freedom for the first I mean it's the numerator degree of freedom that is equal to 3 and then comma again degree of freedom 2 so degree of freedom is the is for a denominator close the bracket press the enter and you will get 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.00192 so you can see it here 0 0.0019 so likewise you can calculate the same value for this batches by using the same formula. So now we will have to take the decision that whether to reject the null hypothesis or to fail or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in order to calculate this, we can also call this F ratio value as F statistic or F not value. Now I will go to the table of F, F distribution in order to calculate my critical values or tabulated values or F distribution value. 
So before going towards the table, we will have to finalize few things that I have taken alpha is equal to 0 0.05 in this problem. And the critical values, the generic formula is f of alpha n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1. So these are my critical values uh, for this. The critical value for the pressure, it will become f of 0 0.05, my significance level. N1 minus 1 is the degree of freedom of the numerator, that is for the pressure it is equal to 3, then comma N2 minus 1 is the degree of freedom for the numerator. This is the numerator that is associated with the MS of error and the MS error degree of freedom is equal to 15. So we will, I will write here 15. Now for the badge, it's likewise F of 0 0.05 comma 5 because the badge has the 5 degrees of freedom and then comma 15, 15 is the degree of freedom for the error. I have to look for these two values in the F distribution table. Let's go towards the table. So the values are three here are uh, is the, is in this row we have the degree of freedom for the numerator and this vertical V means degree of freedom for the denominator. And the first one is three and 15. I got 3.29. So let me write it there in order to remember it. So it is equal to 3.29 and I, now I have to calculate 5, 15. So 5 and then 15 is 2.90. So I will write here 2.90. And my rejection criteria is that if F0 or F statistic value, if it is greater than F of alpha n1 minus 1, n1 sorry, it is by mistake n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 I will reject the null hypothesis so in both of the cases you can see that 8.10 8.10 is greater than 3.29 with this value and the second one is uh, 5.24 so 5.24 is also greater than this 2.90 so in both of the cases we reject over null hypothesis we can we can write reject null hypothesis so what does it mean now we'll discuss it also the associated values are less than 0 0.05 that is also evidence that we will have that over f distribution value or you can sorry my f calculated value or f statistic value it lies in the rejection region and we reject the null hypothesis Rejecting the null hypothesis for the pressure means that all of the four pressure levels has a significant difference among them. Likewise, for the second hypothesis, with, on the basis of this rejection criteria, our conclusion is that there is we reject our null hypothesis and there is a significant difference exists among the six batches of the reason. So we can conclude that the batch affects over quality. However, if we haven't if we haven't taken this factor batches that is a Nysen's factor into our account, what were them? Our calculations or our values for the pressure would remain the same. I am going to tell you that I, the ANOVA has been calculated without taking in, into account the batch to batch variation or the blocks. So in this way, you can see that the student pressure numerical values are same. However, the data for the batches or the Nysen's factor data has been included in the error term. So in this way, our MS error value has been compromised and this value compromise in this value will directly affect of my F0 or F statistic value. So that's why my results are not accurate if I ignore my Nysen's factors. The objective was to separate the effect of Nysen's factor from the, effect, from the main factor that was over extrusion pressure. If the ANOVA results comes out to be significant, it means that there is a difference exists but we do not say where difference exists among which two treatment level difference exists in order to find where, where the difference is among which two uh, treatment levels are different from each other we always from uh, we always calculate the post hoc test so in this example i all i also do post hoc test is lst so in the upcoming video i will solve this thanks a lot for watching the video if you have any question you can ask me in the comment section Please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Bye.